Did you know that you can dodge the Burrow Acid Spit ability by opening a gate? You can see ability is cast, nothing happened here, and ability is on cooldown. If you, however, instead target the wall segment, then obviously opening the gate will do nothing. Ability is cast, we see the animation hitting and damage is dealt. Did you know that you can optimize your shaman's heal and attack by microing? A shaman attack cycle takes roughly 4 seconds, slightly less. I measured this based on the point of impact here. So whenever the unit gets damaged. Roughly 4 seconds. And if we now look at the heal cycle, standalone, this takes, in my measurements, precisely 5 seconds. Again, measured on the point where the health bar changes. So heal plus attack takes 9 seconds. And now, we can optimize this by alternating between heals and attacks. So, here this is supposed to take 4 seconds, this is supposed to take 5 seconds, but you can already tell it's much faster. In fact, it's roughly 6 seconds. So, with that knowledge you can show off your <laughs> PvP micro skills. Did you know that you can change the field of view of your battle forge? If I scroll to the top left of the forge, you can see I can barely reach until this spot down here. I have a 1440 resolution. But if you go to menu, options, graphics and change the field of view, absolutely nothing will happen. But <laughs> if you restart your game, then my video will show a black screen. Which is also very interesting. But then, if you restart your game, which takes some time, you will realize that the field of view is enormous. Now if I scroll up to the top left, you can see I was before in this spot, kind of here. And I gain all of this space as extra view. Which can be pretty awesome for PvP. Um, just be aware. You need much better micro and you will sometimes miss target units because everything is small. Did you know that the blue dryad damage reduction 25% for friendly units does not always apply? We have here a 300 damage eruption spell and it should protect our swift claw 25%, meaning it will deal 225 meaning we will be at 425 HP. The full damage we will see here on the Dryad 500 HP, 300 damage will leave the Dryad with 200. So 425, 200. And 422, 200. That's exactly what happens. However, if you cast the spell and you kill the Dryad, we will see what happens. Boom, 300 full damage. The reduction did not apply because the Dryad died. So the damage was fully applied, no protection. However, there is a one more layer, which I just found out while making the video. So I'm also learning, which is pretty awesome. So, we said if the Dryad dies, we get the full 300. But I lied to you. Actually, <laughs> it didn't. It applied the damage reduction. Why is that the case? I think it's because the way I'm triggering the eruption, whoever is closer gets calculated first, and whoever gets calculated first like influences if the damage reduction applies or not. So, if you're a fire player, and you think you can deal the full 300, make sure to cast the eruption closer to the Dryad, otherwise you will be sad. 
So yeah, closer to the Dryad and we get the full 300. Pretty sweet stuff. Did you know that arcane spells do not need ground presence? Here we have a regular spell. It says spell in the image and in the description. You cannot cast it if there is no ground presence. Which means if I have an air unit, I can still not cast it. No ground presence. However, if I have a spell that says arcane, then I can cast it without having ground presence. Okay, we just swap to Shadow Orb to show something else that is pretty cool. We have here Motivate, which is Arcane. I can cast it without ground present. However, nasty surprise, it's a spell. Just because I can target a unit doesn't mean I can cast it. It doesn't have ground presence. If I fly my birdie over here, I have ground presence and I can nasty it. 